about these coaches that are asking for like selfies and sexy pictures. We haven't okay, talked so about you know that. what? Let's get let's get to that now. Okay, so now um, there's been, there's been a few things going on there on your Instagram, and like we were talking earlier, there's stuff. This team Atlas. So, do you want to give a bit of a description of like what is this team Atlas and what is going on here? Because some of the things that we were talking about, I mean, it's very disturbing. And this 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 goes into the number one point that I talked about earlier is trainers that are taking advantage of their clients yeah. in inappropriate misconduct. So what it is, is you have a man named James. He owns Team Atlas. He got pretty lucky in that he had like a number two and number four bikini Olympians. And that, you know, got him like 600 clients or whatever. Now he's famous. Now he's a millionaire. Now he's got all these bikini. He's a bikini coach. He he sells SARMs and peptides on his own to all of his clients. He forces every one of them on it for lengthy periods of time. 24 weeks does not educate them. If they say, no, I don't like it. He says, why? You don't even know what it does. And I can verify everything I'm saying. So take it for what you want. I, I, go to my highlights, okay? So many people have come forward. So many people are so scared of him. They're refusing to come forward and talk. They, these women have been sexually assaulted. These women oh have God. been given fake season to cis letters. These women have been um, served lawsuits. Um, they, they're, they're signing NDAs to not talk about him. When they sign a contract and sign up with him, they're not allowed to talk about him if they leave. Like, he calls them eggs. Women are his eggs. He asks all these women for selfies, sexy pit pictures, but yet he claims to have a girlfriend. Um, one woman did a video expl exposing him, saying that the first time she met him, he basically like started touching her butt and her glutes and told her to lay down because her lower back was tight and he massaged all over her. Then asked her to spend the night. Is she this the so girl that he asked up to his room? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what yeah. it was, I mean, apparently this this uh, this James guy from Team Atlas Montreal, he invited his client. Okay, this is the, apparently the first time. They first had, time they're meeting. He brought brought yeah, invited her up to the room. He tried to get her to sleep over. He's massaging her back, giving her a massage. It's like I don't understand that. That makes no fucking sense. And she's completely. Like, it's like, it's like soft it. rape almost. He's a predator. He's a predator. I just want to shed a little bit more light onto what's happening. Specifically with James from Team Atlas, this has taken so many, so much balls for me to do this right now because I'm not this type of person at all. But I will never work with him again. I sent him a check-in before I met him. I met him the weekend of the Pittsburgh Pro because I wanted to meet my coach, and he invites me up to his hotel room. Should have known that was probably a red flag from the from the beginning. Has me immediately take all my clothes off, asks me why I'm single, why I don't have a boyfriend. Well, ask me if I'm single, don't have a boyfriend, I should have just said I did. And he has me hit my front pose, my back pose, starts touching my glutes and my legs, probably just to see how much body fat I have on. Maybe it was just a normal thing for him to do, I don't know, a little uncomfortable for me. Um, and then he asked me how my training has been. I told him I haven't trained for a week because I just threw out my back. Um, then he insists on me laying down on the bed, face down, and that he give me a back massage. Um, I was like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Like really, I, I'm getting over it, it's fine. He's like, no, 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 I insist. So like a... Like an idiot, I comply and I lay down on the bed. I don't want to cause any confrontation. I literally just hired this guy. And he straddles me with while I have no clothes on and he starts rubbing my back and my glutes and I immediately just start sweating profusely. He asks why I'm so sweaty. I was like, maybe because this is the most unprofessional situation I've ever been in in my whole entire life. So I was like, all right, I'm good. This is done. Let's stop right here. Um, he gets off of me. I immediately start putting my clothes on. I try to change the subject away from why are you single? You're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I start talking about show dates and what I need to work on and try to put my clothes on as fast as I can because I'm like ready to get the fuck out of there. So, um, <laughs> he then proceeds to ask me if I want to sleep over. I was like, bro, the last time I checked, you had a girlfriend. 
Um, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. He doesn't talk about it that much, obviously. But... I'm like, no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. He's like, well, really? What do you, what do you else are you doing tonight? You just moved here. Like, just sleep over. I was like, no, absolutely not. But thanks for the offer. I'm going to leave. And I was even like a big enough idiot to actually thank him afterwards. And I'm just now I'm just like, holy shit, this is not okay. Like, this is not okay. Yeah, it may be just a back massage, but it was just, it was so unprofessional so many girls are coming out about how creepy he is and I can definitely attest that he is definitely a creep so if I would have known I wish I would have known as like a first time bikini competitor yep and he's a complete misogynist and a complete narcissist and because he's got money he gets away with it yeah no that's he's already unacceptable banned and in that's a Canadian this- uh, organization he's banned like CBBF or something I don't know he's he's already banned there so it's just a matter of time Before he's banned in the IFBB MPC. So who is this guy? Well, like, we, need, like, we, need, we, like, we need these people banned. I'm sorry. They, no, we this do. is not no, acceptable. No, it's not okay. This, I mean, this is, is this is seriously, this is this is this is going to cause people depression, PTSD, oh, trauma, suicide. It, of course, traumatized. I mean, look, when I when I was doing this, there was no females. There was female bodybuilders. It was yeah. back in the you know nineties. Like, now they've opened up this whole door. And to be honest, I didn't really get involved with with coaching the women because I'm so good at coaching the men. It's it, to me, it's I, I like what I do. You know what I mean? I think the reason that some of the men want to coach females is because we're very impressionable which means we're easy to manipulate because we simply just we just we just think that you know what you're talking about and we go along with it and you know a lot of times women you know we're a lot of women are betas right so they don't have a backbone and they're not going to stick up for themselves when they get put in an awkward sticky situation they just kind of um it's abusive it's abusive over soon it's abusive Oh, he's it's, it's, totally it's abusive. immensely sexually abusing these women. Absolutely. I mean, and there's there's others like this. This is not the only one. There's a lot of guys like this. Oh yeah. I saw. I don't want to mention this guy's name, but all I'm going to say, he's probably the most famous posing coach. Okay. And I don't want to get into it more than that, but I was at Armburst years ago training with Heather, and you know she's like, "Oh, you want to watch." So and so is uh, is giving a posing class. So I was interested to see what another coach does because I really don't watch what other people do. You know, I I'm into my own craft. And I watched I watched his face as he was looking at the girls, and I was repulsed. I was repulsed by it. I had to leave. I had to leave because I was like. You know, I, if he looks at like like you like that, I'm gonna have to jack this fool up because she's my friend. And and just the guy, I don't even know. There, there's just no cooth, no integrity, I, no ethics, no morals, but, no value. But not only that, not only that, I mean, this at, guy doesn't even. He didn't even look like he worked like out. Trouble or something. But this guy didn't even look like he worked out. I don't even know where he got his knowledge from. I, I, I he, some of you may, you, you know who I'm talking about. If he's very, very, very cry very, the night before my party view if it's who I think you're talking about. This, this guy, this guy doesn't even look like he works out. He's got a a, a midsection on him, and he's got all these for all of a sudden he's just like authority imposing. And, and a lot of that is because. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's who I think you're talking about, but if it is, um, Shelby refers everyone to him. That's that. Well, that's around the time frame. So, so if you think about it, if you're Shelby, probably is the guy. 60, 480 active clients, and you're referring all your clients to this one posing guy. Yep, yep. That's so. So th- 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 this is bad because what's what's happening is is now the business is going to like a monopoly of a, of a conglomeration of people that are giving bad <laughs> advice and they're of right creeps. of creeps and and it's really giving this whole sport a bad reputation and, and it's really giving. 
bodybuilding great again. And it takes a lot of people and effort to do that. You know, I, I'm only one voice. I'm only one person. If there was solidarity in this and we were all, if we all had the same mission to make bodybuilding great again, we could get rid of all these dark horses and evil spirits because that's what it is. It's pure evil. These people are into greed, power. They're, you know what I mean? They're not in it for the true passion of the sport. They're in it for all the wrong reasons. They're predators. They're main things. They are predators. Yeah. They're predators. predators. They're, 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 they're not, they're not really coaches. No. They're taking, I mean, listen, you know, I, young women, I don't, stealing people's money. Killing I, I, people, know. leaving people with heart conditions. Poor Jody, you know, is thirty years old and might have to have a heart surgery. Jesus, like, it, it, at what point did these coaches? You know, why are none of these coaches coming forward and being like, "You're right, that protocol is wrong. I shouldn't have wrote it. Uh, my, uh, you know, I'll never no, write it again." It's or funny you say that. They can retire. No. Like at it's this just... point. If there's no criminal, legal um, things that like litigation that can come from it, just retire and do us all a favor. Well, you know what? How many people well, they, 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 they think that there should be some legal consequences. Oh well, to the this. sexual assault. The reason I mean, that a lot of the women aren't coming forward is because I think you know they are trying to handle it legally, but it's hard because he's in Canada and they're in the U.S. That makes it very difficult. It does make it a lot more challenging, that's for sure. But you know what? The least that we can do is try and get all this information out there because at the end of the day, so the people, they don't have yeah. clients, they don't have a business, and they can't do this any further. And just exactly. for anyone watching, I was telling Steph this earlier today. One thing I do, because I have male clients, I have female clients. I have more female clients just because I have more female clients, okay? What right. I do, my, my girlfriend is always at home. I have an open door policy. You guys can see. I'll put this in the video. I have stairs for my clients to come down or an elevator. There's no door. All my female clients, they're allowed to bring their boyfriend or their girlfriend if they're gay or whatever. Um, they can bring a family member or a friend, okay? Don't ever touch your clients unless you ask permission. And even if you ask permission, you, there's no need for you to be touching your female, her boobs or her butt or anything. I'm talking back of the tricep and you still ask permission, okay? Don't be a predator like this fucking guy. Now, yeah, on, on, on the, oh, hold on, really quick, really quick, guys. On, on the flip side, uh, is I, I work with a lot of guys, and if I'm there, and if I have to touch a guy's butt, it's not the same thing as yeah. when these guys, it's just not the same thing. And, and I can stand by that. Everybody knows that I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not gay. Well, so if, if I work with a guy, if I'm doing it, I'm doing it just strictly out of professional. There's a way to do it that's professionally. It. And there's there, a way yeah. to do it where you make someone feel uncomfortable. And if, if that person feels uncomfortable, nine times out of ten, they're not going to let you know. They're just going to leave and then probably uh, come back. Or they're going to leave and probably go cry in the car. My, my clients will, will punch me in the face if I make them feel uncomfortable. And they're 300-pound women, they're women, the you know, big black guys. I don't mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, women they just they just take it because we're the smaller gender and race and like we're we're weaker and we don't we know we don't like the conflict. We don't want to create so, the, that, you know, conversation, that hard conversation to make and matters. And that's not, no, you know, the, that's the absolute worst thing. The, the, the coach should be self-empowering the women. They, they should literally feel oh, no, when no, they talk to the coach. Fat, obese, oh, my they, God. They ask yeah. them if they have kids because you have stretch marks. Like, he's, he's the worst man. When I say so he, brow, he, brow, he browbeats people that already have low self-esteem. Yep. Oh, this he is them down yes. even lower, and then he takes advantage of them. Is what he's really Total doing. Total narcissist. It's a manipulation. Yep. Gaslights them, makes them feel like wow. shit, makes them feel like you're nothing without me. You need me. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's. And do, bad. Just, are are, the, are most of these girls single, or do they have boyfriends that that know uh, about this, or they keep it hidden from their boyfriends? Uh, he he's claimed to have a girlfriend for two and a half years. I understand that, but if, if 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 I was dating a girl that showed me text messages that some guy was saying, I would be like, nah, that's not going to work. You know, you I, I was doing a guy. live last night with Heather Munson, and James unblocked me just to come on my live, and he started commenting negatively, and I saw the comments coming up, and I said, excuse me, Heather, I need to pause where we're at, and I said, James, I see what you're doing. You're, if, if you want to watch the live, 
watch the live, but you're not going to come on my live and talk negatively or, you know, say these comments that you're posting. I will block you. So I called him out. Right. He didn't like that. He didn't like that at all. So then in the middle of the night, like two thirty in the morning, he found the guy that I'm dating and just starts shit talking him about his height, calling him a child and a baby, asking him if he needs his bottle. Like I've never seen a grown man act so immature in another grown man's DMs before. I'm like, first of all, you have guilty written all over you right now doing this. Second of all, why are you doing this? It's two thirty in the morning. Go to sleep. And thirdly, like, what did my man do to you other than we, I exposed you for sexually assaulting women and now your butt hurt? This is you know, shocking. Feels hard. His business is threatened. He knows he's being exposed right now. And he's just taking... Well, you should have thought about that before you assaulted women. Boyfriend. Sorry, you should have... Assaulted. We need to listen. We, what, what, what we need, what we need and what this sport needs is, they, like you said, solidarity. The, 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 if, if they're not going to... Look, the, the organizations are going to hate me for this, but this is the truth. It's gotten to the point where we need a union. We need yeah. a union. We need a union leader. I, I'll be the union leader if, if, if the people want it. This way that there can be some kind of regulation, self-regulation, if they're not going to, if they're not going to, if the sport's not going to take responsibility and say that we need to accept it. And, I get that. Look, you know, they don't want to say that Lance Armstrong did what he did for years. He was doping. OK, it is what it is. Right. But that doesn't mean that the people can't come together in solidarity. Create our own union. That's what I'm that, saying. We need to you know what I'm saying? Safely. We all and, 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 it. and then this this needs to come with some people that have really, really the people say these people are educated. And, and then they don't need to yeah, I mean, you're not going to say like there are people that could be chiropractors or doctors, stuff like that. They're talking about that doesn't make them qualified. What makes them qualified is the clients they work with and them speaking highly about them. Not well, you saying this like guy that, told now me now on Shane's story. He's got all his his clients posting um, all good like reviews about him. And I'm like, why are you doing that now? Yeah. yeah. No, but there. But see, here's the thing, though. You can't put good reviews to combat bad reviews. There should never be bad reviews well, ever. I mean, you have to. You have to. Good review you post. I've probably got twenty in my DMs. I haven't even gotten to yet because I'm and, so and, overwhelmed. And the whole problem could have been solved if he just was more of a of a man about it and just literally just called you and talked. To you. Listen, I'm sorry. I was wrong. You know. You know. Can we I just keep this between us or something like that? I do think Shelby genuinely feels bad for what he did to me. He has apologized to me. Um, Shelby has not blocked me. I think that he knows. I, 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 I thought he was, he was a good person Shelby. too. I heard I heard he was a good guy too. That's why I feel bad. I have because, bad I mean, I know he wants to do his best. Shelby. He wants his people to win, you know? Yeah. yeah. This isn't about you know Shelby. This is about a protocol that he wrote. This yeah. is well, you know, that's what it is. You know, whether you feel bad, whether he's a good guy or not, it's not that. The point is, is that you're you're training people for a competition, which means you and you should know how to train someone for a competition. Based now, on the protocol that you told me, this guy doesn't have a fucking clue what he's doing. He does not have a clue what he's doing. I, no, I, and I, I felt I feel now like I was violated in the sense that when I found out he didn't know what to do with the BMX and he was asking my source, I felt like like a guinea pig or like a lab lab experiment that and you were no, no, you were right, but it didn't go wrong I'm, I'm still here so now he gets to go tinker with his little you know method and try to perfect it even more no so this is this is right now what we're talking about is experimentation yeah. with Trial somebody error, using maybe that's all it but, is but but you the doctors don't experiment outside of a certain dosage range and when you start telling people to take something outside of the high medical dosage range you're really overseeding any boundaries that have any logical sense to have medical prescription or say that you know what you're talking but, about. But you, do, you you think that he, do you think that he knows it's negligent? Do you think that he knows what he's doing is wrong? I don't know. I'd like to talk to him because I don't. I don't. I don't think that. I, you know. You, you don't know. Some people might lose their way. I can tell you that he's been yeah. telling girls. Uh, telling girls. At least I know to take high dosages of of drugs that I know for a fact physically I mean, change them, and they're not the same. How do you how do you explain the 
120 micrograms of clen or 200 micrograms of clen and 120 That's ridiculous. That's, uh, that's absolutely ridiculous. And what was the I, protocol? I, Who was it? had one of his females taking clen, cytomel, T3, and DNP? And DNP. Who was doing um, that? So, look, I, I don't even, I, I don't think anyone should take DNP first off, period. Uh, and I, know, I have friends I, that, that I like it. I like it. I, I, like I, I know. Well, some people like it. Yeah, I, a lot of people like it. I, I personally think that, you know, that the solution is more in the diet. And I, and I think that the solution is not in just a consistent low carb diet for a long time. That's not how you do it. You have to add carbs in yeah, every, every three to four days, maybe five at the very max. I know people that go like Monday to Friday, low carbs, and then Saturday and Sunday. I, they kind of, uh, that works for some people, you know? I think Jamie Pinder did a live explaining her time with Shelby. And he had her on no carbs starting at like 24 weeks out. <laughs> No, no carbs for twenty four weeks. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you know, so was there vegetables or was it just? Well, no, chicken? I don't. He doesn't count fiber. He doesn't count that. Yeah, well, that's that's, that's, that's good. No complex carbs. Yeah, wow. no complex carbs. I, I mean, I only think that's but, necessary but towards the very end. This. He brags about his protocols. If you go on his story or you go on his highlights, he brags about making these women do three and four hours of cardio on seven, eight hundred calories a day. For weeks. That's, fucking, that's torture. Brags, this is what it takes. It's not what it takes. That's so torture. What? That's wrong. Off their lives? Yes, that's what it does. Yeah, it does. You can't you can't put yourself in that negative a deficiency and expect to not have negative side effects health wise. There's a reaction. There's a reaction. There's a reaction. I mean, that's why I say. But you can't explain that to him because he's he stands firm and true by by his methods and his protocols. So he one of the things extreme, he thinks this yeah. is exactly what it takes because you know in bikini they're going with that emaciated skinnier look, and so that's what it takes. And he's not no. wrong that that's no what they takes, no the no time, bikini like, girls need to diet for six months and they and they don't need to have as many refeeds as these coaches give them no one, that's no four hours of cardio no one should do four hours of cardio that's Not insanity two or three two yeah, hours if you're if, if that's the case. okay two, look, two hours if you're if you're uh, a gifted uh man that that is eating high calories and taking lots of steroids and stuff or a decent amount of steroids and you know if if you need two hours of cardio to get ripped, and I know a lot of guys that I know like that, because, did an hour on the treadmill and an hour at night, hour in the morning, hour at night. But he's just yeah, talking. but that, that's what I'm. I, you, well, you nailed it on the head. It, it, you pretty much have to be an African American male to get away with that. And there is a lot that has to do with genetics that people that these coaches don't understand at all. And you know, the, the, the Asians can't take the diuretics that the African American males can, and Caucasians don't use the same diet. Everybody's different. There is there is a lot of truth to that, and people don't really realize that. But first and foremost, I mean, you can't even talk about diuretics unless you know minerals. And the education has to start back from nutrition and back to training the core of this before it even goes into the third step where you talk about drugs. Because at the end of the day, if you're just talking about drugs, you're a drug dealer or you're, you know, or you're just a, a, a you're a advisor on man. drugs. Yeah. yeah, you're advising people on drugs. And, you know, you can use drugs to enhance somebody, but really the key is the training in the diet. I know guys that yeah. just dieted on one bottle of test, no clan, no T3, but they ate just tuna out of the can and I mean, vegetables. This is back Dion, in the 90s, you know? Dion, he was natural when he got like, what, second at the Arnold that one year. His first Arnold. He hadn't touched a drug. I believe but, it. I mean, you have your genetic freaks. What I think yeah. it is, is you have these... This rare, these rare genetic freaks like Shanique Grant, Juliana Malacarne, you know, these rare women and people who take very, very little and get very, very far with that. And then you yeah. have other women, other people who don't have good structure or shape. They have shit genetics and they're trying to force it. And so how do you do that with gear? Yeah, I mean, more, listen, no, look, 100%. And in, 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 in the male world, too, it's the exact same thing. They look like shit. You've got guys that are on Insta, YouTube, Instagram, talking about they're taking trend for a year. They're, look, they're shit physiques. They look like crap. And then now they're dying of kidney problems. And these guys are like supposedly co coaches. It, it it's not even logical that the people think that these guys are an authority or have any knowledge on the use of pharma, pharmacology, you know, pharmacology in the application and bodybuilding world. They don't. 
they experiment with themselves and because they experiment with themselves they they experiment with others they don't have an actual protocol that really works what we're doing is we have i have protocols that that are tried and true they work there's no question about it they, they work and they're not cookie cutter perfect protocols they're everyone's different you know but they work for every different scenario so like your situation maybe you don't want to do diaries or a small amount is perfect for you that may work for good good for you i may have a guy who's uh you know and this is just the way it seems to be you know i've worked with so many people but this is the way it seems to be dark black african-american uh in in my case men but maybe women they seem to tolerate and can use more diuretics now i have a theory on why this happens but i don't want to get into the genetics of this right now this is a whole nother discussion that would take about an hour to discuss but i've been down that road so i can understand why that person could use would would genetically be able to use more and i think the same thing happened in the, in the men's world with like Chad and Ronnie Coleman which we heard on the just the interview we just did with Sean Ray where he was talking about you know how Ronnie was in the bathtub and Chad was putting ice in there and making him drink water and stuff like that and you know that's a fine line because you know Ronnie was out doing shit that he shouldn't have been doing probably wasn't listening to Chad and then Chad had to come in and save the day so I could see it on that aspect but then at the same thing exactly. damn what like, we never really know what our clients are doing behind <laughs> closed doors or when we're not around and that that's that's totally different than the principle of the fact hard. that it's don't hard. write the shit down on paper to begin with. You know, like how how do you feel comfortable telling a young woman that's twenty one years old to take um, sixteen ephedra pills a day, two thousand <laughs> milligrams of caffeine, a thousand micrograms or a hundred micrograms of T three, one hundred and twenty micrograms of that's blend, dangerous. And, and you're that's okay, dangerous. Like with that. That's dangerous. That's that's uh, that's three times more than what I give. That's right. One of the problems here, um, we talked about this with Sean Ray. Okay, my opinion yeah. is somewhere in the bodybuilding world, there's been a major shift where the focus used to be on training stuff and diet. Yep. Now the focus yeah. has 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 veered off into. Um, the, it's not in training and diet. It's all in PEDs, high dosing. I mean, some of the dosing that people are taking now is ridiculous. I'm not kidding you. I have a female client. I won't mention her name. She was she wasn't even she was mid twenties. You know how much Winstrel she had, her coach had her taking a hundred milligrams a day of Winstrel, oral Winstrel, and a hundred milligrams liver. of Anavar. That's absolutely fucking disgusting. Well, I I, I can top that. I just had a female client that switched close to coaches. Well, I know of a female client. She switched coaches. And the coach told my coach that she was on 1.5 grams of test a week. What? 1.5 grams of test a week from a her female. Coach. Female. Does she look like a male now? Does she shave? She wears I mean, a wig. I mean, yeah. I mean, so this is this is just unacceptable. This is beyond unacceptable. Like, this, is, this, is, this is making my head hurt. <laughs> Let's look outside the box. There's a reason we're chasing this look, right? Does this start with the judging? It does. You know what? It does because some of these females, so someone like that, the female, yeah. the judges need to say, look, we are not looking for this look. If you get this look, you know, we might not even let you compete. You know, I know. I mean, I can see it going to that. Like if everyone in the lineup doesn't have the criteria that no one wins today sorry but okay but hold on like, let's I, 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 I agree I agree with you 100% but then let's also look at the bad information I mean you shouldn't have to do things that extreme at the end if you're ready you're always going to have people that push the envelope and that do the extreme at the end of the day I just want people to have more knowledge before they decide to do it you know because then at least i can decide if i want to do it or not you know and, and maybe just diet a few weeks longer yeah. and don't don't eat so many fucking and, cheat and meals like instance, man like i i interviewed heather munson last night she took a half a diazide and ended up in the hospital finding out that she had hypokalemia her whole life and didn't know it until she took half a diazide so people are thinking that I'm only talking about extreme protocols. I'm not. I'm talking about that, the fact that's that hard. have underlying health conditions and not know it and dive into the sport of bodybuilding and take the mildest protocol and it can still kill you. 
You know, 100%. And, and I've been saying this to Rob because he asked me the same thing about diazide and it's supposedly potassium sparing and all that. And I said, it's not potassium sparing when you're in bodybuilding condition. It's potassium sparing to a normal person eating a normal diet and having normal sodium and potassium in their diet and they have a normal amount of water. But it's not potassium sparing when you're in that condition. And I say it, it's the same thing. People don't know about no salt and potassium and the difference between potassium chloride or potassium gluconate or any other thing that's really not well, powerful when enough. You, when your potassium is dumped, there's not like a, just a half a packet of potassium I can take. You need an IV. Mm, it should well, never I mean, get to that what, level. What you you're you you're, know, like, you're right, but it should never get to that level. It should yeah. see the whole point. If you do it, if you do it correctly, which is, I believe, what I do, is I have them load on potassium before they even take the diuretic. So whatever they take for the diuretic will never affect the potassium in a negative way. They always will have enough potassium. Doesn't matter if you have someone that's hypokalemia has hypokalemia and they don't know it, and you don't know it. You're going to learn the hard way. That's that the problem. That problem is that, you know, with bodybuilding, even, just like you mentioned, even a protocol that is not that extreme, look what happens. Someone ended up in the hospital. So Now, did, so, now, did she end up in the hospital a couple times from this? Well, that's, yes. She went back two more times. Um, she thought that because she was on the prescription medicine and, take you know, taking things to help keep the potassium in, it wouldn't happen again. That, that was false. That's on wow. her. You know, that's completely on her. They thought they were playing it safe and doing it safe, and, and that's not the case. What I'm merely saying is maybe, you know, from now on, before we prescribe these diuretics, we get their, you know, certain labs done before. That has to be. Has yeah. to be. Well, no, no, sure. from the, no, before the, the honestly, well, yeah, it, you need to start with the, the blood test at the very beginning. And before the diuretics. Right. You know, wow. make sure that your minerals and everything are up to par before I put you through this depletion process. She took a half a diazide. She half a diazide. Did and she even need it? Time she only took a quarter diazide and she still fainted and went to the hospital. And that was wow. her on the whatever medicine it was. Was it slow K? I'm not sure. You'd have to ask her. Which is potassium chloride time release. It's time release. It's usually, and for anyone yeah. watching Diazide, you know, so here in Canada, um, Diazide, you'll see a lot of, um, it's the generic brand by Apotex called Trizide. It's the same thing. It's a combination by uh, product with uh, hydrochlorothiazide and triamtrine. Yep. Yeah. And it is pretty mild, like for the most part, you know, because like, for instance, I remember Shane, like when he told me to get, I think he told me to get like four to six tabs. And I was like, that's, I was like, I've never taken more than one. He's like, it's so mild. People don't realize that they can take a lot of it and be okay. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever you say. And um, I just, I took what he told me to take and I was shocked that I could actually take so much. But what happened was that I noticed is it was almost like my body started recycling water and I looked worse. I looked softer. I looked worse. Because your body, your body happy. will will regulate it and pull it out from from the muscles and put it under the skin. That's what yep. happens, and that's exactly yeah. what happened. And yeah. it's because that's why you have to time it. You got to time it for the last forty eight hours. You can't just do this shit this whole time. Your diet has to be impeccable, and then you have to get to the last few weeks, and then the last few weeks have to be even more impeccable. And yeah. even, but you you can't go zero carbs fucking like six weeks out. That's stupid. If you do that, then then the last week won't work. Yeah, you have to you have to realize that once you do something, like it's Shelby. not going to work again. Like with Shelby on his extreme protocol, you know, I was sending him videos every like couple of hours after every couple right. of meals, and I was flat as fuck. And I hmm. have you can look at my pictures. I'm never flat. I right. never flat. I was gifted with round full muscle bellies. I do not get flat. I swear I have black people genes, and I'm a white girl. I don't get right. flat. It took ten days of. of aldactone four yeah. day three four days of diazide and a bumex for me to get flat but i remember i've been looking back you know and i'm like what was he looking at when he saw this i'm flat and he still told me to take the bumex why he, he what he okay so what he mistakenly did and this is an amateur mistake he he saw he saw the sub Q water from the muscle being flat and being withdrawn from pressing against the skin. And what he thought was that, that if he gave you more of a diuretic, you would lose that film. He didn't realize that it was going to be coming out from the muscle, the muscle more. because you, when you were too flat. And so a lot of coaches make the mistake. Make an attempt to fill me out. 
I got a hundred grams of white rice. That was my carb up the morning of the show. So here's he, he, he must have thought he must have thought you were going to spill over. He must have thought you were sensitive to carbs. Hold on a second. So this is one problem that I want everyone watching to really understand here. You're doing a bodybuilding competition. It takes some time to prep to look good. Going into this, your final week or your final ten days, fourteen days to the competition, what people try to do is they try to manipulate their body. Um, the minerals, direct, yeah. carb, carb deplete, carb load, to try and make themselves look 10% better in about a two-week time frame, okay? What like happens is it, they, end up looking, they end up looking, they time it wrong, and they end up looking fucking worse, okay? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. doing these extreme protocols are not worth it because just like Steph said, she did this extreme protocol. It's very, very unhealthy. And what happened? She did not peak. She, if she would have just kept doing what she was doing and didn't manipulate anything, she probably would have looked a lot better. Now, I do know that I lost 16 pounds in 36 hours with that protocol. That's fucking, that's, that's so dangerous. And that's with sodium and water being cut. So that's just pure diuretic doing its job. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, listen, you don't, you don't, you, and I'm telling everybody who hears this and I want them to know any coach out there that has you do anything like that for more than fucking 12 hours is out of his fucking mind out of his fucking mind and i i thought i i thought i had people take diuretics hard i really did and then i heard some of this shit and i'm like these people are out of their minds because people used to think that i was crazy and and i'm like this is like this, this isn't even like it's pharmaceutical like dosages you know <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I was definitely yeah. terrified to go to sleep that night. I was, my heart, my chest felt wow. very tight, and I was terrified that I, if I fell asleep, I would have a heart attack and I would die. So I just didn't. That's what happens. Sleep. Your heart yeah. cramps. Your heart cramps. I was cramps terrified on to fall asleep, and so I, I just so kind dangerous. of got up and started getting ready for the show. And I you, remember you at like 3 a.m., I took videos and sent it to him, and I was like, "This is the best I've ever looked, like as far as dryness." But I right. was still super flat, and there was nothing sure. that was going to change it at that point, you know. Yeah, there, there would have been. Was I dry? There would have been. Yeah, I was dry. No, but you, 3 a.m. I wasn't on stage till noon. Yeah, but you're 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 mistaken. You, there is some things that you can do. Again, the one thing I'm not hearing about. Is and this is the reason I'll I'll go back and dissect this. Uh, hearing this is the, being the educated one who knows about this stuff. The reason that you were flat was because you took too many diuretics, but it's also because you didn't have any potassium and you cut sodium. Yep. It's a combination of all three things that were fucked up. This will never happen when people get certified under us because everybody that gets certified under our Team Prep Stars brand, those coaches can reach out to us and contact us to help them bring in their clients without experimenting on them. There's no experimentation that needs to be done. You know, if like, some, let me know and I'll share all of that info when you have that up and going. I think that's wonderful. It's up and going right now. It's it's growing now. To be honest. Yeah, I, well, the, the reason we're doing it is, and it ha we started this actually before um, these incidents has happened with the, with these deaths, and you know the people also don't know how to properly come out of that competition. The stage. rebound, yeah. The rebound, and and listen, I'm telling everybody who watches this, okay. If you dehydrate, whether you take diuretics or not, if you cut back the water long enough and just eat dry food, that does it too, okay? But if you do take diuretics, whatever protocol you do, it, after you're done, you need to start drinking lots of water and you need to get an IV as soon as possible. That night, you got to get an IV. This I is, make all this of is my rehydration 101, man. I for an hour. And then you can start pushing water. Um, but I don't push diuretics and I don't cut water or sodium at all. So, I mean, uh, again, uh, I mean, I think I think right after I think every bodybuilder now they have mobile so that's IDs. Something that have, you think that we can have is almost like uh, I think it should be standard. Yeah. I think it should be standard. And I, the, what I used to do and the reason before they had medics backstage, there was me. 
And I I was allowed back at the Arnold Classic backstage when it first started and all that shit. I mean, I was there with all the pro. I was amazed. I, I couldn't believe I was getting in, but I had I had a bag that got me in. And the bag was I had IVs, lines, multiple IV bags. I had a duffel bag of IV bags. To me. And I said, you know, let me help my guy. And if you let me come back and help my guy, I'll help anyone who needs it since we don't have any medics here. And I had everything. I had the potassium IV if someone needed that. I had the sodium IV if someone needed that. I had the lactate. I, I had all of it, okay? Yeah, we and have all these IV bars around. We need like a hydration <laughs> station at the show. We every single show. show. Why, every why single show. Gonna, why were there no med- medics in Spain? There, there's, there's, there's no... There there, should there, be. No, listen, the IV... There the should IV, be. The there should be. It, it should be standard. It should be. It should be standard. Be. They're, they're, they, they have to. Whoever promotes the shows, they need to have a, a, a direct association with an IV clinic that's in the same area that's on hand for everyone that's in the show. They should have a booth. Prior, they should have a booth, but they should also be available to go to the that's hotel room. If they call for emergencies, they have to be backstage also. They need to be like promoted as part of the show, as part of the health totally. part of the show, because this is they, they do this for people that get drunk. You get drunk and you can get an IV. If you do a bodybuilding show, you need an IV. With wine or vodka and espresso. People are still doing all the crazy shit, you know? They're getting mega dehydrated, which, I mean, listen, it, do what you want to do to win, but then afterward, take the fucking IV right away and get out of it. Get out that, of it. That's like what some people don't realize is, you know, just because I made it to the show and I survived and I took all these diuretics, they think nothing, That they think they're in the clear. That's not true. No, your kidneys get fried days afterward. You've got literally you have a time frame that, I mean, that you love, can, one of Shelby's clients died days afterwards because that's the right. you simply could not recover. Listen, guys, the, the, the thing the reason is that when you drink water, it gets processed through the kidneys, but when you don't drink water and you take diuretics, the kidneys scar inside. They flex like this to pull water out from the body. They're pulling like a pump to get water out of the body and they're scarring because there's no water going into it. Then you start putting water back into it and it's already scarred. It can't handle the water. You die three days later. The only way to do this correctly and safely is you can't abuse the diuretics. You cannot take diuretics period for more than three days absolutely not it doesn't matter who you are it's there's there needs to be boundaries if you need to take diuretics for more than three days you're simply not ready for the show and that's it and then the coach needs to put his foot down and say listen i'm sorry sweetheart or i'm sorry buddy you know we we didn't do it for this show let's pick another show and then i can save face as your coach saying that i gave you the right advice instead of giving you the dangerous advice i was trying to still make you peak for a show knowing you're not ready and giving you dangerous diuretics high amounts of T3 high amounts of for a fucking trophy I mean and this this is also and you have to we have to admit the other side of this there's a mental disorder that every bodybuilder suffers and I'm one of them I'm not saying that I'm not one but I at least I identify with it Sean Ray said it too for us to get up there and put on these you know little bikini tights and stuff like that and be judged by other people there's something a little bit not right with us we're just different than other people you know it's really the only sport that's so subjective where it's humans judging (laughs) humans (laughs) <laughs> telling them you're not good enough you don't look good enough you need to work on this this and this to be good enough to be better to place better and then what the people go back to the drawing board and they're like okay well if i take this and i take this or if i add this now, then, you know i'll look better i'll do that now let's look at let's look at it from the it. coaches are pushing their clients the and coaches you know are pushing the people clients, are dying yeah. they have serious health complications so guys Girls, trust me, like, you know, if you get a protocol and you're not sure on it, you don't want to do it, don't do it. If your coach forces you to do something, fire Run. the fucking coach. Fire. Or, or, or listen, or, hold on, Rob, better than that, listen, contact us. Everybody out there, I, I listen, I, I didn't offer this service before, but I'm offering it now because I'm realizing what's happening to our sport. And I'm realizing that, you know, the coaches may have good intentions, but they might not have the knowledge. And if the they coach's listen, job I, is simply to make you win. Whatever and well, that's, sense. yeah, that's, see, that's you not. Integrity, you know better. You don't yeah, that's not, do the whatever it takes thing. 
Listen, you know, it gets, it gets no, dangerous to the point. I, I just had nine clients in a show last weekend. I had eight mm-hmm. overalls, 32 first places, seven seconds, and, and eight thirds. And Congratulations. You know, what most, you know what? I know. I'm super impressed with my team. Right. You know what the awesome. most anyone took was? Half a diazide and 12.5 milligrams out octone that's the most they're ready they're ready they're ready they're ready so they're ready you don't need to do extreme diuretic protocol and this is a local to look good to win. they all did wonderful okay. they all looked amazing they all won they all placed well most of them overalls multiple wins um they all look stunning and you know what none of them had a bad rebound none of them had anything go wrong um but now my eyes are open to the fact that one of them could have had hypoclemia and i never knew oh my god just 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 imagine if 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 that client would have been the one that the other guy gave the advice to and taken all the diazide that they told you they would have been dead that client would have been dead that's it's it's scary you know i mean and there's nobody owning up to the fact that you know i Listen, it, it, it's it's Russian roulette. It is. We have to just sit it's, there and admit it. We all have to admit it. in a sense, you know. It's Russian roulette, but you know when you when you take when you take upon the responsibility that you're going to be, and it's unfortunate that this is the truth. And I'm sorry to say it because what we're saying is is that in order to be good at bodybuilding, you have to say you're, you're going to have to take drugs. You do. You do. Unless you, but, unless but, you but to what level though? So, then well, go to the test an organization. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. But but let's talk about IFBB. In order to be in the IFBB, in order to be to rank well with the judging criteria that they have, okay, you have to take certain drugs. To what limit you take that's the drugs up to and the person. Like, that's up to the person. I know what I'm not going to take. And my coach will mm. never even ask me to take that because we had that concise conversation to begin with from day one out the gate. I'm not uh, yes. taking T3. I'm not taking Trend, Halo, Test, E. Because you know. Anadrol, D-Ball. No, they do. Stuff. I'm not it. taking that shit. I yeah. can't believe any female would they would a uh, coach. No, oh my friend. god, dude. That's awful. You know, dude, when I got off stage, my my I did three shows. Trannibal. When I got off stage the third time, Jake would pull me aside. He's like, Stephanie, you could be and should be winning every single one of these shows. Why are you not? I said, You wanna know why? Because I'm not willing to put shit in the, my body that the people that are beating me are putting in their body. He's like, you know what? I respect that. I said, I'll Life take my goes on after bodybuilding. I'll take Life my goes third on. place every day. Every day, I'll take my third place. I mean, you know, focus on the other areas. You know, diet, training. Yeah. You know, it's not this. The sport people think the sport has turned into. The more you take, the better you're going to do. And like, and I said, the focus has shifted. That's what's bothering me the most. Is like in all of this, I have not yet once seen a good training protocol come from Shelby or Shane. Like, why are we so fixated on these extreme diets, these extreme PDs? It all start. The fundamentals start with the basics, right? Training, yeah. training, hey, exactly. nutrition. Well, not while we're talking, cardio, not even supplements. Just training, working out, and what yeah. to eat. While we're while we're talking about this, I want to give my uh, shout out to Big Rod Smith and Team Alpha Zulu, Alpha Zulu Strong, um, who trains a lot of a lot of people. I mean, he really trains people hard. You know, I've, Nobody I've, wants to train hard anymore, but they don't want to train. I'm telling you, you, you look at look at uh, at uh, Alpha Zulu Strong and just see how hard these guys are doing. Uh, I mean, the women too, drop sets, you know, hard reps, fifty set reps, holds, isolation. I, didn't know, I, didn't I mean, know what all training that hard shit. was until I did powerlifting. I had no idea what training hard was until I did two cycles of powerlifting, and now I know. And it's hard. So, okay, guys, we're just going to wrap this up here. Steph, if people want to contact you, um, you I'll put your Instagram um, in the comments here. But uh, your website, um, what's your website, Steph? BeFitFierce.com. Yep. So B-E-F-I-T-F-I-E-R-C-E.com. And Steph's Instagram is Fierce Fit Steph. So if you guys uh, have a story or anything that you want to release on a, a, a protocol or a coach you had a bad experience, contact Steph, contact ourselves, IamBigRob.com, or my Instagram, IamBigRob. Um, we've also got TeamPrepStars.com and Amin, your contact information. At Guru underscore Amin on Instagram and uh, GuruAminAli at gmail.com or GuruAminAli.com. 
G-U-R-U-A-M-E-E-N-A-L-A-I. Good. Okay, you guys. Too, well, too. thanks, Steph, for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And and I just want again, let's just let's just all work together to make the sport that we love great. Okay.